cost principles. So this is subpart E. Applies to cost reimbursement contracts. However, for educational re institutions, the requirement in the UG to use a consistent estimating methodology does apply to fixed price contract proposals. So what that actually means is, as I'm sure you're all aware, when you're putting together a grant proposal, you're supposed to follow three basic standards in the process of putting together that cost proposal. I should say the cost proposal, not the proposal in general. The cost proposal. When you propose a cost, or I should say this, this is the life cycle of a cost. When you propose a cost, it needs to follow the same methodology in proposing it as you do in, in charging it and in reporting it. You can't vary the methodology. I'm not saying that the cost has to be exactly the same as proposed. I'm simply stating that you can't make up salaries, put them in the budget, then charge actual salaries because that's what your financial system is going to do, but you're, maybe somebody was trying to pad the budget by pushing the salaries up. You cannot do that. The methodology has to be the same. And you must report it the way you proposed it and the way, not the amount again, but you, the methodology must be reported. So if you proposed it as percent of effort, you must charge it as percent of effort and you must report it as percent of effort all the way through. That's just an example, okay? Um, in general, fixed price awards are not auditable from a cost perspective because there are no costs. It's a price. You agreed to provide this report, widget, whatever it might be, for X amount of money, period. That's the way fixed price awards work. Whether it's a contract or a grant, there are fixed price grants, but universities don't normally see those. Those are uh, normally issued to small businesses and small nonprofits and so forth. Um, but even though there's no audit clause in a fixed price contract, there's no FAR clause for audit. So the government can't come in and audit the costs you've incurred on a fixed price contract. They can audit your cost proposal to make sure that you followed the same methodology in putting that, cost pr uh, that price proposal together, that fixed proposal together, as you would normally use in your normal non-contract, or I should say your um, cost-based proposals. So you still have, you, you still, even though you aren't going to be validated against your costs on a fixed price contract, you still have to follow a legitimate university set of processes for putting that price proposal together. And so they can, they can actually audit on that. And that is explicitly stated um, in, the, in the UG. You can Thank still you. get in trouble on a fixed price agreement, though, um, even though they, they, they can't be um, auditing the costs that you've accumulated on that particular um, Commerce Department funded project. But um, you, you still have exposure to uh, what they call defective pricing. So if um, you knew your investigator had reason to know that it was only going to cost $100,000 to do this project for the U.S. Census. And they said, but I'm getting paid fixed price, and so um, I'm going to submit 160000 because they don't know how much it's going to actually cost me. They're not using the same um, proposal budgeting methodology as is mandated here. They are fluffing their budget to try to get paid a higher price, that's defective pricing. And, and, and where they can have you know, increased exposure to that, where, where we look very carefully at the potential for defective pricing is when, when we have enormous residual balances at the end of a fixed price contract. We're like, how did this happen? You told them it was going to take $160,000. I mean, that's the price that you offered, and then you only ended up charging $92,000 to this. Did you actually charge the, 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 the costs to some other project in order to build up a big residual balance on the fixed price? Because that's fraud. Or did you lie in your estimating stage about how much you needed in order to get paid a higher price for this deliverable? That's fraud. And all so, sorts of fraud are bad. 
Not just all sorts, all of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, 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 there aren't any good kinds. <laughs>